Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In today's lesson, we're going to continue looking through the algorithms library. So let's go ahead and visit our website, CPP Reference, our favorite website on this series. And we're going to go ahead to the algorithms library. Now it looks like they've done a little bit of a web update since my last video is here, but nonetheless, we've looked at many of these operations, non-modifying sequence operations. And you can see we've looked at for each, for each, and so on, many of the search operations. Uh, we haven't looked at the fold operations. We'll get to ranges eventually. We've looked at many of the copy operations under modifying sequence operations. Uh, we'll look at swap eventually, just a handy one to have in mind. We've looked at some transformation operations. Again, transform, which is sort of like our map operation in other programming languages, other things like replace, uh, replace copy, and so on. Uh, we've got various fill, generate, generate an uh, element type of things for generating, removing, some order changing operations, some sampling operations. We've looked at a lot of these here. We've looked at partition sorting, uh, binary search most recently. So make sure you're subscribed and check out the last video in this playlist on that. And now we're to the set operations. And importantly, these are on sorted ranges here. So just keep that in mind here that these operations uh, need to basically do a linear scan through to uh, data structures and determine is something included in one set. So let's go ahead and start with includes today. Uh, we'll do a little bit of a deep dive into that, and then we'll take a look at some of the other operations in a future video. So the basic idea, if we go ahead and look at some of the versions here that are listed since C++ 20, the difference with the until C++ 20 usually being that we get a const expert version, meaning we can do interesting stuff at compile time. Well, the idea is, with this particular function, we have two iterators uh, for each range, the first and the last thing that we want to look at. And then we just return true or false if, well, this one set is included in the other. So another way to say that, if we go ahead and read the function here, is returns true if the sorted range from the first to last is a subsequence of the uh, first range that we provide here. OK, so let's just go ahead and illustrate that. So let's say we've got some collection here. Maybe it's an array or a vector. It doesn't matter. That, again, that's the advantage of using the standard template library. Uh, we might have one, two, three, four. And this will be our sort of range one here and our range uh, two. Maybe we have something like two, three. So this itself is a subsequence. We can find that same subsequence and it's in sorted order within the other range. Okay, so that's the basic idea here. Now, again, as mentioned with these set operations that we're going to look at, both must be sorted. So that means there needs to be this uh, operator less than implemented. Again, we just need some sort of ordering. Why is that? Well, because we're looking at a subsequence here to make sure that these elements uh, follow in, in the uh, same order uh, um, as shown here. And there could actually be a gap, right? I could have element, I mean, 2.5 here and 2.3 would still be a subsequence of range one. In fact, we'll look at that as an example. Okay, but that's the idea here. Um, okay, so again, if you need a uh, review on that word subsequence, I mean, here's an example. If I have A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, A, B, D is a subsequence, right? So, you know, even though it's not A, B, D explicitly, right, it's still found within this other uh, sequence. Okay, so that's the idea here. Uh, and sequences, again, allow you to have duplicates. So again, we'll take a look at a few examples here. So again, these ranges do need to be sorted. Maybe we'll try it without sorting um, if we have time. All right, or you can try that as an experiment uh, to see if you get some sort of weird behavior otherwise. Uh, but that's the idea here. All right. Um, and then as mentioned, we need some way to compare. So I need to be able to take some type A and B and then return a true or false to know if one side is less than the other, okay? So we'll do a few examples here. Now complexity, and again, you might have, um, just by looking at this example, figured this out, that this is gonna be some sort of linear time, right? I need to be able to look through this sequence from the start to the finish and this sequence to the start to the finish and see if I find uh, the elements, okay? So again, I need to look at all of range two, all of range one. OK, now, again, that's in the worst case. You might be able to terminate early and so on. Uh, but again, that's the worst case analysis. OK, now these are probably good interview questions. Maybe you've done this in an algorithms class if you've been in university to figure out you know, how you would code this sort of operation. Um, you know, here's a very um, concise way to do it. Again, just looking at the iterators that are coming on here. And well, while the end of the first uh, well, let me go ahead and put an illustration here. Uh, again, this, this second range is what we're sort of comparing to see if it's included in this 
first range, again, just to make that very clear here. Uh, so if you look, you know, and don't find the first element by the last, then, you know, uh, that, that's when you want to terminate, right? There's nothing else to look at here. Uh, otherwise, you are incrementing along your first iterator here, right? It's checking for the subsequence, checking for the subsequence of each of these elements, right? You're comparing two to everything. Um, and then let's see here. Uh, so if the first is equal to the last or the first second, uh, that'd be at the end here, is less than the first element here, basically meaning that you didn't find it, okay? We can kind of reason through this a little bit. <laughs> this is, again, a very, um, you know, concise way of uh, implementing this, uh, but kind of nice to think about here. I mean, you could probably write it out clear. In fact, I think the second example is probably... Oh, this one looks a little bit clear, I suppose, just because they're explicitly calling the comparator there and showing you, but uh, that's the idea. All right, so let's look at an example. Let's go ahead and try this out here. Uh, let's just open up a main, and let's go ahead and we'll return... Uh, let's work with vectors for this one. They're working with uh, characters, but we'll go ahead and just work with some uh, vector data structures here. And let's just give ourselves a vector v1, uh, and I'll assign that, uh, or let's just directly assign it 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, some odd numbers, and vector v2, 2, 4. Uh, well, let, let's, let's do a positive one first. Let's... Um, five and seven. Okay, let's go ahead and just play around with that here. Uh, and then let's go ahead and set up our C out here to print true or false. You might have seen this in previous videos here, bool alpha. And then let's just go ahead and print out. Uh, and let's let's store these as a result here. Um, just to make things a little bit uh, clearer here, we'll do our operations and then our output. Uh, so the result is going to be um, if they are included, okay? So I've got standard includes, that's a new function that we're looking at. And then again, the iterators here. So v1 begin, v2 begin, oops, uh, or excuse me, uh, v1 end. Make sure I try to get this right on the first time. Let's go ahead and uh, make our screen a little bit wider. And then the sequence that we wanna check if it is in fact, v2 is a subsequence of v1. So let's go ahead and try that out here. Uh, and we've already got, um, since these are integers, we have a less than operation, right? That's going to be built into C++, so we don't really have to worry about that, okay? So let's go ahead and compile this. Uh, I'm going to use C++20 here. Got to use some modern stuff. Um, and we are good to go here. True, okay? Because 5 and 7 is found here. Now, again, if these aren't sorted, let's go ahead and see what happens here. 7 and 5, right? Because a, a sequence um, has some order in it. Okay, so let's just compile and run this. So this is false here. Okay, so again, our, our values do need to be uh, ordered here. Um, if we have just one number, we're okay. Uh, let's see, the empty set. Let's see how C++ treats that. Oops. Uh, let's see here. Just V2 without any values. Um, oh, that's not going to like it. I think we need to explicitly pass in a type. Uh, True. Okay, so the empty subsequence is a um, subsequence here. Let's see if we just uh, do that as well. Yep, that works just fine here. Okay, so that follows our, our mathematical laws as we'd expect. Um, let's go ahead and try a few more examples here. Like if we put in something like 111. So if you have duplicates here, false. But let's put in 111. And I would expect that to be again true here. Okay, so we are following things. They are in order. We can have duplicates. So no problems there. Okay, so let's go ahead and try. Um, let's look at an example here. Let's go ahead and write a custom struct. We haven't done this in a while uh, with the comparators, but um, I like to do this in a lot of my videos here. So let's just say this is just some custom type here. Um, and let's give ourselves an ID here. Um, and um, yeah, just let's let's just give an ID here, uh, and maybe a uh, I don't know, a grade or something, right? Maybe we're grading somebody <laughs> here. Um, let's go ahead and write the comparator. Now I could write this as a free function, right? So let's just follow from CPP reference um, what they told us here. We need some comparison function here. Okay, something like this here. Now we could probably write this as a uh, member function as well if we want. Uh, but let's just go ahead and 
uh, we'll provide the function explicitly. Here's our type custom. And even if we had different types, right, we could, um, you know, uh, compare them or use a drive type here. Const, because we don't need to change anything um, as we're doing this comparison, right? We're not writing any new values. And by reference, so we're being efficient, right? If this is a really big data structure. Um, and let's just go ahead and say, um, now this is where we have to uh, think just, just a tiny bit here. When we return, let's just go ahead and let's convert the grade uh, to an integer. Okay, uh, we could do a C style cast here. Um, where we just treat the grade um, as an integer plus the ID. Uh, and that'll be A's grade and ID less than uh, B's grade uh, and B's ID. Okay, so let's make sure that that compiles. Um, so no problems there. And let's set up another vector here. Uh, with this custom object. Again, just showing you how to use some of these custom things. I don't know if I'll do these for all the set videos, but you'll at least have it here uh, again, just so you can see here. Uh, so let's go ahead and set up two vectors uh, down here. Uh, and we're going to explicitly initialize these uh, with the custom object here. Again, I don't know if our class template argument deduction would uh, do the trick for us. Um, and let's go ahead and initialize these here. Okay. Um, so let's give an ID here of one and the letter A. Uh, oops, let's go ahead and uh, do this here. Okay, and that's how we can initialize uh, something. Uh, and then two and then an A. Okay, we'll just kind of make this simple here. Uh, and then V4. Uh, let's just have it, you know, like this. Okay, so these are in order, right? One plus A, whatever that value is, is going to be less than two plus A. Okay, based off of our... Uh, comparator, but again, let's just see that uh, this works. So let's test to make sure everything initializes. Yep. So again, if you didn't know about this syntax, this is a nice, concise way to initialize our struct. Um, and then let's go ahead and run includes on it. Okay. So uh, the first time through here, um, and let's go ahead and let's go ahead and save our result number two here and kind of center the screen there. There we go. Um, let's go ahead and increment these. So I'm looking within vector three to see if it has subsequence four. And again, let's, let's just try to compile this. Let's see what happens is going to blow up. Yeah, it's going to blow up on us. Okay. Cause we need to supply that, uh, custom comparator. Okay. Uh, if I go to the top here, right, I need to supply this function here. So again, to see that on CPP reference, right, this is going to be one of our other, uh, overloads here where we need to supply this function here. Okay, let's see. Do they do that in the example? Uh, ah, they do. Okay, so it's simple as just, you know, passing in that function that works with the types of whatever V1 are and uh, V2 in our example or V3 and V4 in our uh, example. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and fix this here. Oops. All right. By adding in, uh, and let's get this on one line here, our comparator. And that works here. Okay, because we are finding two within... Uh, here, this subsequence. Okay, and then we could do the opposite example. Uh, let's go ahead and put in like I don't know, four or something, right? And we shouldn't find that here. Okay, so there you go. So with custom uh, comparators, uh, you can now, you know, anytime that you're working with subsequences, check for if some subsequence of one collection is a subsequence of another here. Okay, so quite nice example. Um, I think we should push this just a little bit further, though, just to make this a little bit interesting. Right, we've done the custom objects. Um, let's go ahead and, you know, let's see if this plays nicely with a list here. Okay, to see if one, you know, if we have a vector type and a list type, can we just have iterators and see if these things play nicely together? Okay, so let's kind of copy this experiment here. Uh, let's just work with these two here. Uh, and let's call them V... Five. How about that here? V5 and V6, except I'm going to make this one a list here. Okay. And then I'm effectively just going to copy this as result number three. Okay. Uh, and let's go ahead and see uh, V5. Here we are. And V6. 
and we don't have a custom uh, comparator, right? These are just integers here, but we could, right? We could. Okay, and if I run this, this also works, okay? So this is kind of cool here, right? Just showing that between a vector and a list, we can also see, um, again, this is one of the powers of, you know, the standard template library and the, you know, by having these templated data structures, we can see it's just taking in an input iterator, okay? So it doesn't really care, and then it'll look at the actual data, okay? So that might be a reason why you, you know, use these types of operations uh, in the standard template library. And again, an advantage of using containers, whether you're using the STL or maybe you design something else based off of this. Alrighty, so with that said, folks, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. You can check out more lessons on courses.mshot.io, uh, on other topics, or of course, on the C++ series, um, where I, basically let you sign up for free and you can track your progress as you're working through these STL lessons and discuss with others in the community. All right, folks. Anyways, with that said, thank you as always for your time and attention. I'll look forward to your comments and discussion below and I'll see you in the next video.